very first lockdown, um, we all went home, and the bright idea for us was, oh, well, social media and Twitter. And then we realised we didn't have very good quality digital images accessible from home. And so that was the sort of inkling for that project that you heard about yesterday. And then I'm going to talk, um, it will be an interview with Linda and Rachel, and that will form the bulk of this paper. So during that first lockdown, we wanted to make our collections still accessible. Nobody could go into the museum, so it was I discovered Twitter um, in particular and all the hashtags. And what really was the main thing for us was the museum from home hashtag. So that was Sasha Carrad and Dan Nouveau had sort of set up that movement, really. And the idea is he did one or two minute talks on a topic related either to your collection and you're delivering your museum from home. So in my first sort of one minute talk, I had a photo of an object I held up with a bit of paper to the screen. I was not techno technologically minded, but I'm learning, you can tell. Uh, the second talk, I managed to put my iPad on a pile of books as I'm filming myself on my laptop and you could see the image of the next object. And then a few objects later, I'd um, discovered iShot, and I could put a picture of the object properly edited on the screen. I thought it was the bee's knees, to be honest, by then. But it was quick, it all in that first lockdown. These were the sort of things that we were trying to do, to just try and keep talking about our objects and opening the doors for them. We, our learning and access team, also produced films so people could be um, access our YouTube channel so that all the home learners um, and the people just wanted like sit their children in front of something educational, they could click through everything to do with the um, curriculum. Um, and we've sort of carried it on, so particularly with Festival of Archaeology, we have um, had our own hashtag, Oxon319. There's 319 parishes in Oxfordshire, and we tweeted an object in the collection or recorded by the PAS from every parish, and that was going to be referred to later by Rachel. We have, you remember in the lockdowns, the hashtag, the curator, um, curator battle that was at the Yorkshire Museum, stuff that, we have Finds Friday, Fossil Friday, Hillfort Wednesday, Either all will be familiar to you <laughs> and all coming back, but we would just keep trying to trickle out um, output with uh, really digital output. So this is just some of the images that we outputted and through the Festival Archaeology with that um, object from every parish, these were the sort of phrases that were starting to come up in the cloud. And you can see the bottom screen, that's where I learned a few more um, skills with putting the images on the screen. And we were also starting to do, we mentioned the Ensham project uh, yesterday, and this is a sort of community project, and we had one day, a heritage day in Ensham, and we had four display cases, and we had um, the Ice Age in the DIY shop, and we had a display of medieval pottery in the library. But well, for the people that couldn't get to Ensham on that day, for each case, we made a virtual exhibition. So it's a Twitter thread, and you have a photo of each object and what it is, almost like a label. And the advantages of those Twitter sort of um, virtual exhibitions is you could put more detail in. So Ensham was excavated by Oxfordshire um, Archaeology. So O.A. is Nikki here, was there for three years excavating in Shamabi. And they produced a brilliant publication and also a popular publication as well from it. And you were able to put, signpost these publications in these virtual Twitter feeds and exhibitions. It's just the extra detail that you could get accessible to people that you wouldn't put on a display case. You wouldn't want to see my battered copy of the ancient report now the display case, but you can still signpost it to people. And we're aware that through all of this digital output, and we say it in our virtual exhibitions, we're standing on the shoulders of those excavators. We're standing on the shoulders of the specialists involved with writing those reports. We're standing on the shoulders of people 
who are making interpretations as well. And again, you can't say that really on a display case in a museum, but you can say it and acknowledge it on these own virtual um, exhibitions. So thank you, Nikki. Right, I will let me just see. And this is, we try and put all those films on our YouTube channel, so they're sort of there and they're easily accessible and more easily searched. And also with the new Oxfordshire Museum, um, we have the face, Facebook pages and things as well, and that's developing into a website. I will now let you sit back and watch the film, because it's really how all this digital output unlocked museums for a certain sort of audience. So Dan, could you have the film please? Yeah, so we're going to set the scene to start with. So, you both have a chronic condition. So Rachel, do you want to say what the condition is that we're talking about? Okay, so I'm diagnosed um, with MECFS, which is myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome. I have the same, yes. Okay, so for those of us that don't know, what are the symptoms? What does that condition do for you? So Linda, do you want to start? It's a difficult one. People think it's just tiredness, but it's not. It's a condition with many, many different sorts of symptoms. Um, ironically for me, I have severe sleep problems. Um, I have achiness, um, muscle and joint pains, um, also orthotic intolerance. So um, I, my heart rate goes up incredibly high when I stand up or if I'm moving around or having to do any sort of activity. And that could be washing up rather than going for any sort of physical activity. Okay. So Rachel, what are the symptoms you have? So I would suffer from similar symptoms to Linda, but also um, cognitive problems, brain fog, um, trouble remembering things. Um, there's many different symptoms associated with it, but overall you, you, it results in a really limited um, capacity to engage in life in the way that I would have done before I was ill. So I use a wheelchair. Um, I One of the major problems with ME is getting post-exertion malaise, so uh, payback, increased symptoms and illness when after doing any activity. So I've got a limited amount of energy to use to do things and I have to be very careful how I use it and pace carefully. Can I ask that you just said of an activity, you're not talking about doing an hour's fitness class. Linda mentioned washing up. Do you count like washing up so, as an activity? Yeah, washing up would be an activity. Um, sitting here having this conversation is an activity. Being on the telephone is an activity. Getting washed, getting dressed. Watching right. the television. And one thing will impact on another, so it, you, you can't take anything in isolation. If you've got something that's got to be done, if you've got to go to the dentist, that's the one thing that you're doing on that day, and you will be resting a couple of days beforehand and probably a couple of days afterwards just to right. attend that appointment. Right, well, I'm now going to ask you to read out your tweet that started us all off on this journey. So this, your tweet, tweet, tweet was in response to the output that museums such as the Oxfordshire Museum um, Service, along with lots of other people, were putting out, particularly during that first lockdown and into the second lockdown. But what did you tweet? I yes. tweeted, um, it is great that you are doing this. It is disability, not lockdown, that keeps me away from museums. I hope you and others keep up these initiatives once lockdown is over. I'm sure there must be many benefiting from the increased access that lockdown has paradoxically provided. So what access then was this that you got to museums during the lockdown? So through lockdown, the world of healthy, able-bodied people suddenly got shut down, got smaller, um, and they, their lives became more restricted. Whereas for somebody like me, the world online opened up and museums um, were, were, were putting information out online and engaging people with people online and showing their collections and talking about what they were doing. Um, so my world became bigger, paradoxically, um, at the same time that other people's worlds got smaller. And it just, it made me realise what, 
access there could be, I, I've reached a stage where actually I thought with the level of health that I've had for several years that certain parts of the world, like museums, were not really accessible for me anymore. They weren't for me. And actually lockdown showed that these things are for people like me as well. It is possible to include us. Yeah, Linda, what were your experiences then? Um, yeah, you're right. In the in the first lockdown, especially, there were a lot of um, museum employees who were working really hard to to um, have a hashtag going for all of the museums to join in. They were having a little competitions with each other. Were unable for some reason or other. Were unable to to have a museum open on one day. So they showed a film of a tour of that museum it's one of the roman museums and that was absolutely fascinating because i haven't been able to go to any of the roman museums for, for years um you know all the walking around and and standing around um you know just is just quite difficult so um there was that and other museums were displaying certain items to explain to us what, what they were, where they'd been found, what their history was, what, what the previous use was. Um, so all these little snippets of, of different items that were held in, within the archaeology world. Fascinating. OK, so we've mentioned the lockdown experiences and how paradoxically the museums opened up for you and the world of archaeology because you sat here talking to an archaeologist for the future looking at the future what would you like museums to do or to continue to do to keep them open for you i've really enjoyed the um the following on twitter um what, what's been done in oxfordshire and and looking at just it's bite-sized bits of information so you don't have to be able to concentrate for a long time and you you can take on board um just small amounts of information at a time and really focus on one object or one story i've really enjoyed seeing when you've gone around the parishes and taken different objects from different parishes and it makes you realize that archaeology is everywhere to be found it's not it's not doesn't live in a museum it's about the whole world is underneath all of our feet um, and and to be able to imagine people in those places using those things um, I find really fascinating so I'd love, see, like I'd, love to, <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see you know more of that kind of thing I love the virtual exhibitions when when there was um, you know requests for certain topics and then you could follow a thread through and see that the, the, story, the story being told mm. yeah through different objects yeah. I love that it's a different it's a different way of if you're visiting a museum you're it's an, a big event isn't it you go for a few hours and then you probably won't go back for uh, you know a considerable period of time whereas this drip feeding archaeology into your twitter feed every day or every few days yeah. is really nice you're kind of picking up different bits of information mm. and then being directed to other sites as well right so i now follow more archaeology sites than I would have done beforehand. Yeah. Right, and you agree, I with, agree with that, yes, yeah. Um, just preparing for this, and I was noticing that um, Fermanagh are doing a, you know, quite a regular item, and, and not just them, but th there'll be an idea that comes out and somebody will put a hashtag on. So they were talking about museum roofs, or roofs, right. I don't know which way around it is. And uh, so everybody was showing off you know, whether it was a boring flat roof or a dome or or some beautiful historical architecture. I'm sorry, that's architecture, not archaeology, but but just an item of where they are. So you're, you're getting an idea of of where these muse museums are as well and the lovely countryside they're in or or a town or city. So, um, you know, that's, that's sort of, you know, it's, it's seeing a bit of the, our countryside um, on Twitter. Well, interesting doing the um, the unwrapping the package was a good one as well so so, so just you know even if it's you know that the, the um, an employee is is looking in a box to study something to check that it's there even the fact that you know you're opening up a box and what are we going to find in it that's uh, yeah quite exciting I know I, read, I watched the same film that was a con conservatory did that it's brilliant yeah 
And I like the actually listening to different people talking and being passionate about the objects they're looking at and also talking about how to identify a, a brooch or, or you know, the actual process that you go through. And just seeing these, these tweets, is, it's really fascinating. And I, I really appreciated, um, I'm thinking about you know, how things could carry on being, being good post lockdown. I've noticed more recently, there's more adverts for things that are happening that I can't go along and be part of. So I did really appreciate when, um, I think was it, um, there was a, a display in, was it in Ancient? Shim in Oxfordshire, yes. and that was our heritage display yes. that we had for one day. But each case we made into a virtual exhibition on Twitter. Exactly. So, so if you really, couldn't get there yet. I really appreciate, appreciated that. I couldn't be there, but I could still see it and be part of it because it was running alongside yeah. um, a physical exhibition. So it's, you know, it's, it's the experience of being included during lockdown and being included in, in museum experiences. Um, yeah, and other, other experiences it makes me realize it is possible to include everybody um and i'd really like to see that continue beyond beyond lockdown so it's not just those that can physically get into the building that can experience the museum but actually the museum can come out to other people that would be that would be great Thank you very much for Linda and Rachel for that. They're so eloquent and there's a lot of thought and time had gone into those comments. Um, so I have to thank them. So what we've done is give you a brief description of what the Digital Output Oxford New Museum Service did over the lockdowns and other museums. And you've now heard um, a sort of discussion and the impact that has on people with sort of hidden disabilities and you know, these disabilities, people be increasing. So, so think of people with long COVID, there's sort of crossover in those symptoms. And so that sort of that audience is out there and we should look to reach out to them. But thank you very much for listening.